the following program contains situations, material, and or language that is not suitable for all listeners. Viewer discretion is advised. The following program is brought to you by Pizzop Productions. Podcast no one listens to with Kevin Porter. Nice. Nice. Roger Rabbit, do not kill that old man. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to an all new episode of the podcast that no one listens to. I am humbly your sleepy host, Kevin Porter, and we're back for another week that was your life, our life. It's our life. Let's be real, ladies. Ladies, all to all the ladies that are listening to this podcast, let's be real for a second. I'm Kevin Porter. I'm here to be fun. I'm here to be hip. I'm here to be cool, man. So what you are, none of those things. Shut your fucking mouth, man. I don't know, dude. It's been a fun week, dude. I got to go out of town. I got to go to Oregon. I drove through a lot of fucking shitty weather, dude. Fuck driving Satis Pass during a snowstorm. Fuck driving over Portland over black ice, dude. Taking six hours to get to fucking seaside. Go fuck yourself, Mother Nature. So, I don't know. How are you guys? It, I got back, though. One piece, you know. Thank God for that. Uh, it's like, did you go to bed again? Ah, oh, it's like, no. It's like the praying hands. Like, ah, the praying mantis is here. So, yeah, it was a fun it was a fun week, dude. So, I'm just, I'm really high. <laughs> I'm fucking so high. It's like my like like most last minute opening that I've done in a long time, dude. I just got off the the Zoom conversation and recording. Are you ready? A professional wrestling podcast where me and Jay McGay, honestly, dude, I I'm, I can't divulge what me and him were talking about on the after after hours, but it really it was like the whole time we're recording it. You know, it's just it just felt like man, this should be a podcast. I should be recording this because it's just like I felt like we we're on like a, a good wavelength level of like you know just the trading ideas and whatnot and. Um, yeah, dude, here we are. Now I'm uh, recording the opening and shit, dude. So at uh, 9.24 in the evening on a Thursday, you know, February the 18th, for all you people out there in internet land, keeping track at home. So uh, totally stoked on life right now. I think so. You've got that positive mental attitude, dude. Uh, trying to be, you know, trying to live my best life, which dude, I know people are like, that's cringy as fuck. It's like, dude, actually, I've I've said it before on this podcast, dude. I like that fucking saying, dude. Living my best life. Because, dude, ultimately, all you control is your own life. So you want to live your best life. I don't know. It reminds me of Ray, dude. I love Ray. So it just makes me laugh every time, you know, I fucking hear that shit. So I don't know, man. Like, if you're watching the YouTube version of this shit, you've seen that video, man. I totally have been gotten lazy. <laughs> it's like my goatee's, like, still all hell long. But then I got a good, nice mustache going, which... I've always kind of wondered if, like, what would happen if I just grew the mustache, dude. Because, like, I always, like, I'm very insecure about my chin. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, I feel like I have, a, like, I don't know. Jessica makes fun of my chin. So, I think that's, like, where a lot of my insecurities lie is her bullying. Every time I shave my face, she's like, Ugh. She's, like, kind of cringes at me every time I walk by. I'm like, what? What? It's just, like, fucking natural face, man, if I didn't have hair. But it's, like, I don't know. I think, ultimately, like, I look way better with like a little bit of facial hair it's like it kind of just compensates for my weak chin you know got that weak chin game son so uh roger that rabbit fucking son of a bitch i need to watch that movie i'm wearing my roger rabbit shirt right now uh and i have that on vhs and i do have a copy of that on blu-ray actually too so it's, a, it's definitely a movie you gotta like watch once a year i think i think like who framed roger rabbit is a modern day classic which you think about it, it's like that's like all almost 40 years ago it's like how modern day is that it's like whatever man i, I took a fucking swing psh, did not hit the home run solid double at best so it's like deuce is mofo it's like what i don't know man uh shit dude i just yeah i've just been hanging out dude i've been fucking like chilling dude like i've actually feel like i said really good the last couple days man so got a little bit exercise in um trying to eat a little bit better even though i ate chicken wings for lunch today that was a uh, fucking good dude which i finally kind of figured out how to do the home like okay so like when you buy that like generally it, i always felt like when you buy like the tyson's bag of like chicken wings or something from the, like, the, the supermarket the quality is just not that good you know comparing it to like if you were to like order from like pizza hut or domino's or something which like i don't know, jessica talks shit about domino's 
but I, I generally like it. I mean, they're baked, you know, so it's, it's not fried, which, I mean, who doesn't like fried food? I mean, comparing it to baked, I mean, I don't know, dude. Some people's preferences are going to lie between the two of those, but mine ultimately goes to fried. But I do enjoy a good baked item every once in a while. And, you know, so like you get these ones at home and like, so I, I threw them on the, I baked them, you know, in the oven and whatnot. I didn't fry them or anything, but like in terms of like, I totally, cause when I worked pizza, dude, I totally spaced on how you do the wings is after you get them done, you put them in a bowl and you put the sauce in, and then you shake it around. And I'm like, I don't know, for some reason I always get that and just like drizzle it on there. And it's like, dude, it's like one of those like come to Jesus moments, man. You know, you're like, come to Jesus. Like Jesus is like, Hey, there you go, buddy. There's an idea. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're talking to my head? Jesus, ah, crazy. So, I don't know, people hear that and they're just like, calm it down. Calm it the fuck down, as Jameson would say. So, <laughs> I'm feeling very vulnerable right now. I'm feeling very vulnerable. But, uh, yeah, no, so I did that today and, yeah, it's fucking, they're delicious, dude. So, but I've been, I've been just been fucking, you know, getting my shit done, dude. I'm trying to tighten it up, you know, as they say, dude, trying to tighten my life up trying to you know not fucking feel sorry for myself or anything you know it's like don't be a little bitch just get through your shit dude um i say that though but yeah you know you gotta like you gotta like you know you gotta like you know deal with your shit so you know you gotta address it and cry every once in a while and like you know get through it you know but that's it that's life so it's been uh been watch what did i watch i watched the rest of creep show season one which season two they just announced it's coming out on april 1st and they signed him up for a season three. So they're going to start shooting a season three sometime here soon, which is cool shit. Anybody that's watching that shit on, I guess it's, I think it's on AMC, but it's also like probably, I think it's on shutter as well. Um, yeah, I have it, I have it over there, but you know, I'm, I, know, I can't grab it. So <laughs> it's like, Oh, you, you can grab it, but you're not going to grab it. Uh, but it was a fun show, dude. Like it's like, you know, it's like, it, it kind of is like, it feels like it's a true throwback to like what you, you grew up with in the eighties and stuff, stuff with like prop you know, um, practical effects and whatnot and like legit blood, not CGI bullshit, which, you know, they use the CGI when they need to, but like at the same time, it's like, it's used appropriately. So, which dude, it's badass. So yeah, shout out creep show, dude. And then I started watching fucking tales from the crypt season one. I, fin- I, I made it through like the first four episodes a long time ago, dude, like months back. But now I'm just like, yeah, you know, like I need to watch these things. Like, and then I want to start watching the twilight zone I still got Freddy's Dead coming up, dude. It's like, we got movies to watch, man. I got shit to do. So I guess with that being said, dude, we're already there, dude. Sean Hill's on the fucking podcast this week, dude. Like I said, I don't know how many takes I'm into this, dude, but Sean Hill is like one of my oldest best friends going back to like in the fourth grade and shit, dude. So uh, if you haven't already, dude, check out Merit Parcel, dude, on all uh, major outlets out there on your YouTubes and, uh, you know, and check them out, dude. You can find them on Facebook and stuff, dude. So uh, you definitely need to do that now. Stop the podcast and go like their Facebook page. So it's like, oh, bringing it in, bringing it in. So uh, I'm I'm really high. I think I'm going to go to bed. I still got to edit this shit. I got time left on my card, man. So uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Sean Hill. All aboard. Light just turned red. That means we're ready to go. Sean Hill, welcome back to the podcast. No one fucking listens to you, sir. Uh, uh, thanks, Kevin. Appreciate being on again. Thanks for inviting me. Good to, uh, good to see you and talk to you. This good is, to uh, be Yeah, it's nice. With all this lack of travel and being able to talk to people, I'm glad we got that video communications going on. And I, well, it's, it's kind of surprising. Like, I don't, I, you know, I, I would think more people would have a podcast in today's day and age. I mean, there's a, there's a flood of podcasts out there uh, on the internet and stuff, but like, you, you just think like your everyday person, you know, it's like, why not me? Why not me? Right. Yeah. No, I've thought about that. You know, uh, Lauren has his podcast I help him out with and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and I like it. It's, it's a good podcast and that, but I've been debating on, I was like, you know, I think I'm just gonna, why not, you know, nothing. Mm why not start up my own little podcast or something like that and see where it goes. But I've yet to, uh, yet to figure that all out and, and get jump on, jump on the bandwagon with it. You got to do it, dude. You got, everybody has to have their podcast. Dude. It's like, it's like, you know, owning a wallet or a purse. Dude. It's just like, it's just must have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? People don't know what's going on in your life. You don't listen to my podcast. Like I mean, I'm, I'm hurt. 
<laughs> maybe that'll be maybe that'll be the uh, old end of Facebook, you know, and like you know, like MySpace is just yeah. like the old old thing, and now it's Facebook. Maybe podcasts will be like the new Facebook. It's like I don't want to look at your feed. I want to listen to what yeah. your day is. You know. Well, dude, I think it's a lot better, dude. Because like, I mean, I mean, okay. So I'll I'll go ahead and break this. Like, okay, so today. <laughs> I was, I was asking you, I was like, oh, so you've been paying attention to the news today. And you're like, no, Kevin, what, what, what? Dude, the fucking Capitol building got stormed by a bunch of MAGA freaks, dude. Like oh, a bunch shit. of Trump supporters, dude. Like, because of that whole electoral vote uh, at, the, at the Capitol today. Um, they, like, straight up, like, stormed inside, dude. And, like, some shit got shot. <laughs> like, oh, fucking, wow. Yeah, dude, by a police officer and shit, dude. She got straight up shot. And they're, like, showing it on Alex Jones and stuff. And they're not reporting it on the mainstream media, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> um Damn. but uh but uh but yeah no the, like what I, sorry go ahead oh, i was just gonna say that's exciting yeah no dude it was su- it's super exciting <laughs> not that her, her getting killed or anything but just, no not not know. the not the death part like mm-hmm. you know cop shooting people and stuff like that but you know i mean it's chaos fuck it. it's, it's yeah, the same people. thing that happened with like black lives matter protests it was like oh shit shit's getting fucked up dude like yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, finally but, so yeah people are standing up revolting a little bit yeah. can't argue with that but i was gonna i was gonna bring up what you were just saying there is like um so you, you you know flash forward today you know it's like everybody's on fucking facebook like oh you know this is reprehensible blah 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 it's like basically the side that was blaming the other side for that side's you know riots now the other side's going back to them and being like oh you know it's like a bunch of like high school like you know and like you know yeah yeah you know, that type of shit dude so it's like the idea that you know of us just typing out our thoughts you know it's like i think it'd be better if we just communicate you know verbally so that way you know let's release videos of us like going on our rants and shit and then people can like release their own rant you know type out yeah i don't know it seems like a a video portion of you it's easier too on your fingers you know a video portion of you just yeah just like blogging out to the world dude like i think that's the way of the future yeah i could see that for sure i mean i feel like they've always said it's easier to uh uh I don't want to say easier, but like Mm -hmm. easier to write something and like type it or text it or whatever and stuff. Uh, But you don't really get across like how you really feel, if that makes sense. You know, you have, you have a time to rewrite and revise what you're going to, what you're going to say. You know, it's almost like, uh, you know, maybe you should think twice (laughs) about something or like type of deal. It's like, well, you get that. Uh you get that little moment there to like, Oh, do I want to say this? Do I, how do I want to say it and stuff? No, it's like, no, just, just say it out your mouth so we can see it and hear it the way you would naturally just do it. Quit trying to be perfect or being the the person you want to be. Yeah. That's what apologies are for. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I I like that. Yeah. Isn't that just a good I was going to say that just helps out your, uh, your podcast or blog or video thing. If that it's like, Oh, I fucked that one up, so I better make another one and apologize for the last one. <laughs> it's like before you know, you got like 500 videos. You're like, fucking it, I'm doing something with my life. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I got something going on here. No, I was gonna say today, dude. Sometimes I do that with like work and stuff. Like I get in the flow of conscious, you know, and you just kind of let it go out. And I use the word like hype, hype. Um, what's the word? Um, hypothetically or something towards like a, somebody's situation that I was talking to, and then it pissed them off. <laughs> Like, uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to like piss them off, dude. But I was just like, I don't know. They were asking me something, and like, I couldn't answer specifically what they were asking because it was like it would just like totally trash something, you know, in regards to whatever the situation was. And that's yeah. not my job to be doing. My job is here to help you and stuff. He's like, you know, am I, am I the only person in this situation? I can't just be like, yeah, you know, actually, I talked to Sally last week, dude. <laughs> She's going through the same thing. You know, I can't say that. So I'm like. You know, I can't sit here and talk about hypothetical situations like uh, hypothetical. Uh, uh, it's a real thing, and I'm like, I'm, and then I started just apologize to him, dude, and then I shut him the fuck up by the end of the the situation. Because, <laughs> like, dude, I that's one thing I've never had a problem with, dude. If I'm in the wrong, dude, I will apologize, dude. I don't, I don't like holding grudges. I don't like fucking any of that shit, dude. I'd rather just apologize and get the fuck out of the way and move on. Oh, no, for sure. I've always felt good about speaking my mind, but if I get yeah. corrected, I ain't got no problem with being like, oh, shit, yeah, okay, I was wrong. <laughs> Dude, I actually kind of like it sometimes. It's like, you know, you may, you may in the moment, you're like, ah, yeah, fuck you, whatever. But then, like, you, when you, like, have the moment or you know, the time to, like, sit down and, like, think about it and, like, just, you know, like, really kind of intake it, it all and, like, understand where that person was coming from, why they're right, and why you were wrong, it's like, okay, I don't know, you feel like you learned something, you know? It, it yeah. feels like it makes you into a better human being. Oh yeah, for sure. 
No, I feel like you grow off it a lot, definitely. It reminds me of just one, like, funny random instance. Uh, it was a couple of years ago. I was going to the post office, and I had parked my car, and you got to cross, like, the parking lot. And um, I was standing next to this, uh, like, kind of Mennonite-looking lady. Like, she had, like, a bonnet on, you know, and a dress. Nice. And she was nice. she was standing next to me, you know. Did you get her phone and number this... and be like, hey, what's up, lady? <laughs> I should have because <laughs> – that's I guess that's one of their exceptions. They get phones, huh? For the Amish don't. I have no idea, dude. I just took a stab yeah. in the dark right there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Now the Mennonites got it. They get a little bit of technology. Uh, <laughs> but no, so we're both standing there waiting across the parking lot because the truck had pulled in. But the truck had stopped and I like we're both just pausing. He stopped, you know, we're like, okay, like you're, you're going to drive normally, you know, pedestrians let vehicles continue if that's what looks like is going to happen. Right. And he just put his hand up and he was like, well, go. And just like Whoa. gave us this like, really like just all pissed <laughs> off. And I was yeah. just like, I gave him a big thumbs up, but with a bunch of attitude, I was like, like right on, you know, <laughs> stern look in the eyes, you know? yeah, stern look and just like yeah. gave him a thumbs up and the lady and me started crossing that. Uh -huh. and he was like, Hey, he was like, what the fuck motherfucker? And I was like, like, okay, like what? And I, like, I look back at him and now the, the like Mennonite lady, she's kind of nervous now. So she just pedals in, you know, she's like, she's oh, like, oh not I'm not getting in the middle of this. So, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so I just looked back at him and was just like shrugged my shoulder, kind of gave him a like, yeah, fuck you too, dude. And uh, mm -hmm. walked in. Well, he just pulled over where he could like see inside the post office and sat there. And I like oh, grab, I grab my mail. Uh, I go in the office. I'm like getting a package and shit. And I look out the window and I see him like looking back, like, "Oh, you're." So I'm waiting for you to come out. Like, I'm and I was just like, "Like, all right, buddy." Like, like, God damn! I'm like, really? I'm gonna get in a fight with some it's redneck at the post the office? <laughs> exactly. For some guy being a jerk about allowing me to cross. Right. And so I finally walk back outside, and he was like. He was like, hey, mother, and he's still sitting in his truck. He hasn't got yeah. out of his truck and all that stuff. He's like, hey, motherfucker. He's like, what the fuck? And I was like, what? And he was like, why are you giving me some fucking attitude? And I was like, why are you giving me a fucking attitude crossing the goddamn road, like right. parking lot and stuff? And he was like, I fucking told you to go. And that, and I was like, whatever, dude. He was like, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, he was like, he was like, well, the next time I'm going to kick your ass. And I was like, fair enough. Easy <laughs> fair warning. He's like, next time this happens. Yeah. He was like, yeah, next time this happens, I'll kick in your ass. And I was like, fair enough. And he was uh, like, uh, 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 well, all right. And like, we just had like a mutual, like, he gave me like a, oh, well, okay, then we agree. And I was like, yeah, we do. Like, it sounds uh, like you just scheduled a duel, dude. Like, I think you yeah. guys got to meet up at high noon in the fucking city center with guns. Yeah. So I was sitting there. I was like, well, I had to think about it for a while because I was like, this guy's a real fucking jackass and shit like mm -hmm. that. But I felt like in that moment, we both learned a little bit. Like, we both kind of made a slight apology. And we also, like, learned, like, hey, maybe we were both yeah. kind of dicks in this yeah. moment. Yeah. <laughs> and grew from it, you know, like, type of deal. So I, I appreciate that, like, vocal mm -hmm. entity of, like, you know, being able to learn and grow off of actually moving your mouth you know right. what i mean you, you never really know your own vocabulary until you start speaking words and that and then you can hear yourself so it's I, I love moments like that where it's like two people actually like hear themselves and they're like oh wait maybe i'm kind of fucking retarded out oh, maybe i'm kind of fucking retarded like next time though yeah bam we're back dude recording again dude i swear it's uh, like three times have been interrupted no that was uh brandon allen they're recording a podcast an emergency nice. podcast because of all the shit that happened tonight today where i was like i was telling jessica i was like it feels like if there's ever a today a day to like to do an extra podcast today would be that day right oh yeah yeah i think so <laughs> sounds like a good day yeah i dude i love it dude it's like oh man i i love like podcasting it's like you know we and i feel like we're talking still about you you starting because i feel at the end of this podcast we're gonna like announce sean hill's new new podcast that you can find you know exclusively on <laughs> yeah um, i just gotta i just gotta figure out how i want to <laughs> format it i'm not really yeah. sure quite yet well i was saying dude like i've been like really getting like because i'm like going into my fourth year now like fourth year come this like like june or so is like i've been doing it for four years straight like we're gonna hit okay. episode 200 probably 
within the next like 11 episodes that I record. So we're what? almost to episode fucking 200. And that's not even including all the others like sub podcasts that we've done, like the In the Mouth of Madness and like all the wrestling shit that I've done. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, I was just saying like the feeling of like, I don't know, I was just like scheduling stuff out. Like, all right, I got to do this. I got to do that. Like, I don't know. I, I like the busy work of it. I think like I like sitting here recording and that's fun. Like the busy work, like to me, it's just like it makes. I don't know. You're not getting. I'm not getting paid for this, but like, at the same time, it's like, it's fun to put the effort in and see, like, see it grow. No, that's uh, something I really enjoy with like the music and um, you know the podcast I do with Lauren and yeah, uh, a couple different. Shout it out that, really quick too. What's what's your guys' podcast name? We won't even waste uh, it. Yet. Uh, yeah, it's called Black Sheep and Bad Apples. And we just put out episode 44. Oh, congratulations. You guys are almost at episode 50, dude. Yeah, we're damn near there. So, yeah, I think we got another um, – we just started breaking them into seasons, doing oh, like nice. eight, eight episode seasons. So, I think we okay. got another another four episodes left of this season, and then we'll be starting uh, technically, I guess, season seven. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm on like, season like 20 then right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, no, that's been super cool for sure. So yeah, if uh, yeah, if you feel like checking out another podcast, check out Black Sheep and Bad Apples. It's on. Uh, it's just on YouTube at the moment mm-hmm. and stuff. We're still YouTube's working a good on the fucking spot though, dude. Like you can find like so much. Like I spend so much time on YouTube. I used to never do oh, it, dude. But like, dude, podcast galore, dude. Oh yeah, no, it's. Oh, there's, I mean, YouTube's growing so much. There's just yeah. everything on there, everything, but, and if it's not on there, then it's on Pornhub, you know? So, <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh dude, you hear about the shit about Pornhub lately? Like what happened a couple weeks ago? Uh, premium is free. Oh dude, I wish, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the dream, dude. So no, dude, they purged like 3 million videos off the fucking site, dude. Oh shit. Yeah. They, anything that wasn't verified, they fucking deleted. Oh wow. So, so they're raising, raising the stakes, huh? All my bookmarks, dude, on my phone, dude. Like, I hear it on, on – I've heard it on multiple podcasts at this point, but it fucked over a lot of fucking people, dude. Damn. Well, maybe that's what the uh, – why OnlyFans has gained so much popularity. Maybe that's the new platform for unverified video Unverifi- sex. Yeah. Yeah. Or you just go to, like, X Hamster, dude. Like, there's other, like, <laughs> porn sites that are out there that still, like, okay, just post whatever, dude. Just, <laughs> just wild, do your wild thing. Wild yeah. yeah. <laughs> do your thing man um oh fuck uh, but uh, i guess uh, i was gonna say yeah uh one thing i enjoy you were saying busy work mm. it's something i enjoy with you know i'm uh in a couple bands and got the podcast and then uh just random other production stuff you know doing recordings for the world translation center and and um just other mm. studio work here and and it's all that busy work you know i'm not really making a ton from it and stuff like that but i love that busy work and like scheduling stuff out and yeah. gearing up for it and getting ready for it and you know making it all happen and and like that like you were saying with the podcast is like you know every podcast i feel like we get a little better at it or we feel more comfortable whatever it is you know i feel like mm-hmm. it just keeps growing and growing and stuff like that and, and uh yeah so i love all that all that type of stuff artistic things and i i mean i I guess I throw podcast into artistic and stuff, you know, like it's a creative art, creative artistic, you know, lifestyle and stuff is always a ton of busy work. You know, it's like 95% work for 5% like <laughs> put out, you know, type right. of deal. But, right. but, but that's the fun part. That's what I like a lot about it. Yeah. I think like it, podcasting is weird in the sense of it's like, it's, it is entertainment and there is like artistic value to it. But a lot, you know, for the most part, man, I mean, like, I mean, depending, I mean, I guess it depends because there are different types of podcasts, you know, you gotta be like your documentary type podcasts now that are pretty prevalent, which are cool as shit. I I really like that because I, I move around a lot, dude. I don't just like sit stationary at uh, my TV all day. So it's like, it's cool to hear documentary type stuff or just like, I don't know, to me, it's like, it's just like, I don't know, the most, one of the most accessible mediums out there. It's just audio It's like just, you know, just straight vocal audio and like, I don't know. I think stuff like this is like, you know, you're capturing the moment type thing, you know, it's like, again, it's just like, you know, this is a conversation that me and you would probably just have just, you know, like, you know, for the most part, <laughs> if we were in person, just without a fucking microphone or anything. And like, I don't know, I feel like you, you learn about people, you know, you, you get to know that person without necessarily getting to know that person. Like, there's like a lot of comedians out there. Like, I feel like I basically like, especially for stand up comedy, dude, like, I feel like just by listening to podcasts, I learned and grew 
so much just by doing that, you know, like out in, in this, you know, and like to, you know, to think I had been on stage, you know, relatively, you know, not necessarily all the time for the last 10 years or whatever, but definitely through periods of my life, I've spent a consistent amount of time like doing stand up and stuff. But it wasn't yeah. until like I really started listening to like, you know, like actual stand up comics and stuff and like that have actually been on the road and actually like, you know, perform nightly and stuff. And it's like hearing stuff from them that like put other things in perspective, you know you know putting my act back on the stage and stuff and you know i don't know i just podcasting yeah. changed my life you know not gonna lie to you once i started listening to podcasting it really did change the way i, I consume information no definitely yeah well you've had a long run at it and stuff you know going from uh spin this with kevin porter which yeah i want to say say was like a podcast but it kind of had some early fundamentals of a podcast you know shit dude we did a we did a radio <laughs> show on myspace dude we straight up had a radio show uh, okay yeah 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 so like so in 2006, like, we were doing something on, on audio. Yeah, no, that's on like, you've been at it for, mm-hmm. for fucking years, dude, doing that. Like, I made no money off it. No <laughs> fucking yeah. money. So I don't know how successful that is. I have well, the experience. <laughs> no, it's fun, dude. I, I wouldn't change it for anything, dude. I'll do this shit for free the rest of my fucking life, dude. Like I, I am very content sitting here in my office right now with a fucking light on me talking to you dude if we do this for the next like 20 20 fucking years dude so be it dude oh i'm down with it yeah for sure that's kind of where i'm like trying to figure out a new medium and stuff with the music because i love playing and getting up on the stage and like yeah. doing all that type of stuff so that'll be nice when that comes back around because i could do that for a lifetime just you know yeah more or less playing for drinks at the bar type of deal but <sighs> dude, right <laughs> you know. the best dude like yeah an artist type shit dude oh it's great you know it's like almost you almost plan like a vacation around tour you're like well i can't afford to go on vacation but somehow i can play in bars across yeah. the west coast for a few weeks or you know go on tour for weeks and stuff mm-hmm. like that and you more or less get food and you get drinks and then you know sleep wherever and stuff like that but mm-hmm. but that's fun you know it's exciting it's it's everything else you know guess i'm not going going broke doing it but <laughs> it's not like i'm you know it's yeah, sustaining. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, dude, I mean, you, you know, you're being provided, you're providing for yourself, and that's, you know, your basic needs. You know, that's like really all you need, man. Like, it's a very minimalist lifestyle, I would imagine. You know, having to be on the yeah. road at least. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It's yeah, it's not extravagant, that's for yeah. sure. But uh, it's a damn lot of fun, especially since. Uh, oh yeah, well, I guess the last time, uh, not the last time, I was on the podcast, but the um, time the band came through, we had that yeah. bus, and that yeah. was uh, yeah. That was yeah, cool. That, I yeah, always that. remember that. Day. It was like this huge bus just comes down my fucking driveway, dude. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> my quote to my kids, I'm like, those are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that that definitely made it a bit more comfortable mm-hmm. for sure. <clears throat> no, that was fun, dude. That was that was a fun fucking day, dude. Yeah, going on that bus, I would imagine, yeah, that yeah, gives you a lot more space instead of a crammed up fucking van. Yeah, yeah. The van was uh, definitely not fun. Mm. the tour was fun but the van rides were not fun you know driving to Mm. driving to la and stuff in a van with five other people and uh uh, i guess the first tour we took we or that tour we didn't have the dog but our very first tour it was six of us crammed in an astro van with a trailer and a dog fucking astro van (laughs) those are tiny dude and a dog dude damn yeah it was like the dog slept in the back on the top of uh-huh. all of our packs, just in the back window looking out. This it was a really good dog, good. but it yeah. wasn't like a small little lap dog. This is like a full, like a full size lab, you know, type oh, of deal. Sure. Yeah. But luckily it was super chill and he just kind of hung out back there. It was like, cool. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, all right. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love dogs, man. Do you, do you have a dog right now or? No, I don't. I've been, uh, I've been just kind of waiting. I'm st- I'm in this like transitional period yeah. of, of building a house and actually having like a, a, a legal residence, I guess, to live in. Right. No, I remember mean, talking about this last time. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully uh, that'll be happening over this next year. And, um, you know, I got a place nice. with a nice, nice big yard and stuff like that. But with my like technicalities that I have in my living right. situation, I don't right. really want to have like a dog running around shitting in the yard when I'm, not really supposed to be looking like I have a dog and yeah. you know, like, <laughs> why is there a dog there all the time? Like, Somebody must be living there. This, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I figured it'd make more sense to fence in the yard after I have a house for and then get a dog then than to fence in my yard without a house and get a dog. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You got to do what you got to do, man. I mean, you know, so you're thinking that uh, all that's going to be done sometime this year then? You're going to be good to go? Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm hoping I get the construction all going and wrapped up, at least the building up and all that type of stuff. Nice. So maybe over the next year or two, I'll just be doing <clears> like finish work, inside work, you know, just doing all the details myself. I don't really like to, I don't know, all, all the contract. <laughs> yeah, like I don't like, I, I got enough time that I can just, I don't know, I'd rather do it myself. And I know how to yeah. do most of it. So it's mm. like not worth the money for me to do that. But, you know, I'll get the building framed and sheeted and roofed and stuff like that. And then just, all right, cool. I got it from here. Right, right. Just uh, sub out the electrical work. Yeah, that, that would always scare me, dude. The, doing any sort of electrical work, that would always scare me. Um, but I was going to say, dude, uh, no, dude, if there's anybody in my life that would, you were telling me, yeah, they built their own house, like you would be that guy. I remember when we were in a, like elementary school, it was like maybe elementary, like probably middle school, actually. Like, didn't you build like a, you built a half ramp, like, or a half ramp, a fucking half pipe, like in the back, in your backyard, right? Yeah, that was over at uh, Travis Scribner's place. Yeah, that's where it was. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, we had that. And then I always had the, uh, the deck with the, uh, the coping edge on it and like some oh, kickers yeah. and quarter pipes and stuff like that. But then, yeah, he had over at his place, he had, uh, he, he helped out with a couple of them and stuff. Mm -hmm. He, uh, first place he lived, first place he lived, I was right there on Knob Hill. Um, right by the taco, taco wagon there. And, uh, he had this big half, big half pipe that, uh, I guess it wasn't huge, but it felt huge at the time. It was like, I think it was like six and a half or seven feet tall, mm -hmm. but they built like, it got built too short this way. So mm -hmm. when you dropped in from that height, they were just like whoosh, right up the other side. There was mm -hmm. no like flat across and then back up, you know, time to prep. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah, like, no, I understand. I, yeah. it was, yeah, it was almost yeah. like a bowl or something. It just kind of yeah. went like that a lot. And, and um, yeah, we had a lot of fun on that for sure, but it was a little, a little bit much. And then when he, when he moved over to his other house, uh, we, we like cut it all down to, uh, I think a four foot pipe and extended it a little longer. And then, man, mm -hmm. that thing got a lot of, a lot of use for sure. God, I miss, I miss skateboarding back in the day, dude. Um, I actually just got a new skateboard for Christmas. I got a fucking, oh, nice. it took me back to like when we were like, uh, like 16 or whatever, dude. Uh, I remember like the first actual board my mom bought me was a world industries board. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I ended up like on Amazon, dude, it was like, cause I got a hundred dollar gift card for Christmas. I was like, I need a new skateboard, you know? And so like I got one and um, I haven't really gotten to ride it at the skate park yet, but I've been like, all, like practicing all and like uh, kick flipping and shit here. And it's, it's got nice. some good shit to it, dude. So I'm pretty stoked on it. Hell yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I still got a board around. I don't ride it too much anymore and stuff. I got that. Uh, well, I got a ton of skateboards. Yeah. One that's one that's got trucks and wheels that I, I'll ride around on and stuff. I usually keep it in my truck. And if I get ambitious, just randomly just when I'm out. I'll, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I got a longboard as well. I've been enjoying the longboards. Um, my buddy Taylor, he plays uh, Keys and Sax and Merit Parcel. He lives over in Weaverville and he's got some long boards and he's scouted out all the long runs and uh, big oh, hills cool. to bomb and stuff. And so um, he's like the other, oh, the other skater in the band. So whenever we go on tour and stuff, we, we always take a skateboard and stuff and we have long boards and skateboards and hit mm -hmm. up the parks and, and, uh, <clears throat> but I went on a uh, downhill ride with him the other day and he had figured out a section where we could, Man, we went like way past the airport and like down a road and this, like he, he knew this spot was like, all right, then we just, we park here and we walk up, you know, another half a mile up to this spot. Oh, shit, He's like, man. we actually left two cars like doing like a, like a river uh, float or something like that. We left a car in town, downtown at where we were going to end up and then drove his car up to where we were going to go and parked it. And That's smart. it was, it was like a, like a five mile run. Dude, that's badass, dude. That's yeah. badass. I was like, damn, dude. Like, holy shit. Like, we just started. He was like, yeah, just keep going. There's one spot that's a little flat. But he's like, if you hit it all right, you're not going to have to kick. And we'll go all the way from way out of town to downtown and shit. And, yeah, we did this, like, 
like yeah i feel i think it was like five mile like just downhill run going for a ways and stuff i was like damn dude like that was sick like let's do that again <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no dude uh longboards are like they're like I, I have one too but i haven't really gotten to ride mine the last like three years or so because like when like for someone, um I'm not, are we breaking up or anything you're like you have audio issues on your end just uh curious yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because I, I can see that the, the video is kind of fucked up, but the audio is coming in fine. Um, well, yeah, okay. So, like, when I, when I first bought my longboard, dude, I was living in suburbia still, and uh, I was able to take it out out there, dude. Yeah, dude, just, like, what, two or three pushes, dude, and you're fucking riding that thing for a couple blocks. Oh, yeah, no, it'll get kicking good for sure. Um, those longboards. And it's nice with the soft wheels because you can roll on the, like, right in the road, you know. Mm where like my my trick board like my regular skateboard and that that thing has got like small hard hard wheels on it and stuff you're not i mean i can't ride down the middle of the road at all and stuff and uh and it's loud it's just makes your feet vibrate after three blocks you know type of deal the way you're numbing your shoes and stuff (laughs) yeah dude i remember yeah no that's yeah it's definitely been uh been fun i like say i I keep them around all the time and stuff and I um and I've been just kind of collecting skateboards uh over the years too and that so I got so I say I got a bunch of skateboards um one that are ride and stuff but I don't really ride anymore I feel like I've been just kind of collecting them over some years and that but I I got lucky uh my girlfriend for my birthday gave me out see him pop it over there see him on the wall there yeah she gave me a whole bunch of uh let's see there's a an old foundation, an old black label, um, a flip skateboard, and an old birdhouse skateboard from like, nice. I feel like back in like late nineties, early two thousands, yeah. you know, type of deal. Yeah. And then I, and then I got real lucky the other day. There was, uh, I guess I say the other day. It feels like the other day. A few months ago, this lady was selling stuff on the side of the road. You know, like parked her truck, had a truck full of things. And um, I was just cruising by and I, I looked over and I saw a skateboard sitting there and I was like, oh, I'm going to go check it out and stuff. Yeah. And I went over and it's an old saw blade from uh, from like the 80s and stuff. She had two identical ones with like this dragon on it that's like oh, standing cool. on a bed of skulls. Yeah. But it's like, it's the old, you know, like wide single tail and it's yeah. got all the plastic yeah. s- strips on it and stuff that yeah. used to be all the bumper guards and the like, you know, plastic. All the bells that, like, and whistles. Yeah, yeah. So I picked those two up from her and uh, I was like, how much you want for the skateboard? She was like, uh, how about $5? Oh my I was, gosh. Like, I was like, yeah, I was like, oh shit. Like, yeah, you got it. I was like, pull. I was like, you got change. Like, here you go. Like, I'll take those right now. <laughs> oh yeah. Her friend was like, like Marjorie, I'm telling you, you're getting rid of this stuff too cheap. And she was like, she looked at her and was just like, well, I want to get rid of it. You know, like yeah, the if I charge too much, they're not going to buy it. And I need to get rid of all this shit, you know? Exactly. Dude, that's a smart fucking lady, dude. Yeah. That's why I was like, yeah, yeah. Shut your mouth, lady. Yeah. Like, <laughs> shut up, fucking gear trade g- g- yeah. g- or whatever the fuck your old lady would name is. Gear <laughs> trade. I don't know. Like that is coming out all weird tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, dude. Skateboarding is fucking fun, dude. That's a, uh, I feel it's funny because um, I remember when we were kids, dude, and um, Travis Scribner's dad would go skateboarding with us. Oh yeah, I dude, I'm that dad now. I'll Are go. That? The, I, I take my kids at the skate park, dude. I am the oldest fucking dude there, like fucking, like ninety five percent of the time, dude. I am like, and dude, like kids come up to me and they, like talk to me and ask questions and stuff, and I'm just like, because I, I don't do that much when I go to the skate park, dude. Like you know, I'll, I'll still ride the the ramps and stuff, and I'll do but, like. Do, go ahead. I was going to say, but for your age and how well you know how to roll around, they're just impressed. Yeah. They think I'm like, <laughs> they think I know what I'm doing, dude. And it's like, dude, I, yeah, like I should have, I wish like I, I would have kept skateboarding through like teenage years, dude. Cause like, I felt like once high school hit, is like, that's when I stopped like skateboarding all the time. And uh, I wish I would have kept going, dude. I wish I would have gotten fuck, kept getting better. And so like through my twenties, I, I have, I've always owned a skateboard. Um, I had this like, I forget the fucking brand name, dude, but it was like blue and checkered and it was like a complete too. So I had the blue checkered, uh, the blue checkered fucking deck along with the blue checkered fucking wheels. And like, um, yeah, it was a really good board, dude. I, I still have it, but it's so nice. fucked over, dude. Like I had to, like, I need to replace out 
definitely need to replace the 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 wheels and the bearings and stuff at least but um trucks seem to be all right but yeah yeah for sure yeah i I don't think i have any boards from from back in the day that i used to ride um that was my oldest i got that one in my 20s oh okay yeah yeah yeah, that's i'm trying to think i don't yeah no my boards are fairly new i guess i feel like i oh i got one long board that i've had since uh i guess that's the only skateboard yeah i forgot about that i bought a long board from big five on that's Nog where Hill i bought there. mine too <laughs> yeah yeah i got oh man i feel like i was in high school when i got that yeah. and um i still got that uh sitting around and stuff it's yeah. uh my buddy repainted it though awesome. he like he like uh my buddy adam adam uh you know adam schmidt he, uh, yeah, I, I remember that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He pulled the trucks off it and repainted a cool scenescape on it and stuff like that. And so I've kept that around. It's like, Fuck yeah. I feel like, like say, all a bunch of boards have ended up just becoming collectors' pieces. I got a yeah. couple boards that have been like hand painted, and oh, wow. I, I still got one from uh, one deck. It's a YooHoo chocolate uh, milk deck. Okay. And I went to work tour one year and uh let's see this was in high school uh, i guess i do got a couple from high school but now that i think about it yeah uh went to work tour there at the gorge when i was in high school and had travis scribner's younger brother justin was with me mm-hmm. and there was a yoohoo chocolate milk booth where they had these skateboard decks and we had i had acquired backstage backstage passes um from this guy because i got punched out outside of pete's when pete's was still open there on second street I remember se- pete's. Yeah. yeah yeah i got punched in the mouth outside of pete's one day talking to a guy who was a truck driver for the warp tour no and shit really? yeah yeah i was like yeah i was just i was in high school i was walking by pete's i was out you yeah. know just doing mischief in the town and shit mm-hmm. and uh when I was walking by Pete's, there was this guy and he was wearing a cool t-shirt or something, a band that I knew. And I was like, we just started talking to him. These guys came out the bar and punched me in the mouth. Just like <laughs> some drunks, you know, like did yeah. some stupid shit. And I'm sure I kind of smart ass with them just a little bit. And uh-huh. uh, uh, this, this like. Sometimes this that's why the cookie crumbles, man. Yeah. So this guy like knocked, <laughs> knocked me in the teeth and fucking punched me hard and stuff. Like, you know, I had a, my lips were swollen up and all that type of shit. Well, anyways, we went back to his truck, figured out that he was on warp tour. So we got a uh, long story. We got backstage passes from him. He was like, yo dude, he was like, you guys are super cool. He's like, if you're going to warp tour, he's like, I'll put you on the guest list and you can have oh, backstage whoa. passes. That's so cool. Yeah. And I was like, so Oh cool. shit. Like, all right. And, and uh, so I called him up like a month. He was like, call me a month before warp tour. So I don't forget, you know? And I was like, right. all right. And I called him up and sure as shit. And he also owned a skateboard company in Arizona. This is where I thought it was kind of like interesting. And um, so I called him up and sure as shit, like my friends, the other two friends with me didn't believe that he would actually do it. And so I ended up with, I went to work tour with, uh, with Justin and his girlfriend at the time and myself and, uh, uh, my girlfriend that's when uh Justin and me were both dating sarah's at the same time <laughs> oh, okay yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, I know i know what sarah's you're talking about yeah and uh i showed up at the booth and sure shit my name was on there plus plus two more and stuff so i had three <laughs> three backstage passes and i was like well here you go and here you go and so anyways it was after the warp tour was over we're walking around because we got backstage passes and shit and the yoohoo booth the yoohoo chocolate milk booth was still set up they were like breaking down you know and justin walked by and he was like yo what would it take to get uh to get one of those skateboards off you and i guess the lady was just feeling a little spunky and she was like i'll tell you what she's like i'll give you a skateboard deck for every one of these paper cups you eat oh what the fuck (laughs) yeah and he was like i think I think she expected he would be like, oh, fuck that, because they're like decent sized paper cups. You know, they weren't like little short shot Dixies, you know, like, yeah, yeah, no, it was like a full size, like solo size, you know, paper cup or whatever. And he was, he was like, are you, yeah. And she was like, yeah, fuck yeah. And so he was like, all right. And so he mowed down one and she was like, here's the board. He was like, give me another cup and that. And he mowed down another, he he ate two paper cups, like full size paper cups. 
and she owned up on it. She gave him two skateboards and he came running back over to me. He was like, yo, dude, I got this for you. And I was like, I was like, what? And he had one for himself and he gave wow. me one. He was like, he was like, thanks for the, like, you know, the hookup, all this shit. He's like, just so you know, I had to eat two paper cups for these. I was like, damn, dude. So yeah, I've held on to that one for sure. I got the, uh, the all you who skateboard yeah. deck from, from Justin eating paper cups. Yeah. That's a unique story, dude, for sure. I mean, like you definitely warp tour is like one of those like weird, like carny ass experiences dude because yeah dude, you just show up there and it's like you're kind of like in your own nation it kind of feels like you know like yeah oh, i mean barter and trade right yeah, barter yeah. My, i'll barter entertainment you give me entertainment I'll give you, <laughs> skateboard decks. you give me a story i could tell other people that i just made some guy do and you can have these skateboard decks he goes back he goes back like five months later he's like you know you're actually held liable for that because i actually had some internal issues because of that shit. Yeah. That blockage <laughs> you're gonna pay my medical bill please <laughs> oh that'd be that'd be funny if you could even remember that and shit oh Fuck my gosh man, man yeah. warp tour used to be all screwed up like that like that was the same year they were get, that was the year monster energy drink came out oh was it and, wow. yeah and at warp tour they had a monster energy drink booth you and they were just those away no they were yeah. yeah they they just had like a they had like eight people in a row mm-hmm. they're all sitting there with like uh pouring half a can of monster in a cup and they're like here you go here you go here you go just handing them out people in line like oh there's free drinks over here because you know a bottle of water is like twelve dollars and yeah. shit inside the gorge and that so they were like oh shit well free drinks over here and nobody knew what monster energy drink was they were just like cool free Whoa. drinks Whoa. and yeah <laughs> So then it was like, oh man, so many people. It's like middle of the desert, middle of the summer. It's 110 out there at a concert with a ton of people around and shit like that. And they're handing out free energy drink, monster energy drink. It was like bad combo yeah, it's and bad. stuff. It's almost as bad oh, yeah. as beer, dude. Like to drink like a bunch of sugary shit in the middle of the fucking summer. Like I think beer oh, yeah. getting drunk is worse, but like drinking a bunch of sugar in the summer is not good. Yeah, no, it was just like it was horrible and stuff and that's uh, another thing justin did i give it to him i guess props to justin if you ever hear this him. or watch it and stuff him. yeah if you see him yeah like, sean was on uh, my podcast he wanted me to say yeah. something to you yeah yeah no it was that was also when he just helped out he just ran around back to the monster energy booth it was like hey can i help out and they were like yeah sure bro here start handing out drinks and they just like gave him start it was like grab from here so he started pouring out drinks for like an hour he did this and that and he was like all right i gotta take off and they gave him a whole case of monster energy drink for free for helping out they're like here you go that's for you so he came back and it's like we just had cans of them and it was yeah like i drank like six of those (laughs) oh i know uh yeah, the girl Sarah that I went with, she yeah. we ended up having to take her to the first aid tent because oh, she got dehydrated. Okay. Yeah, and so she was like, like passing out and all loopy and that. We took her back and they gave her a bunch of saline and shit like that. They were like, yeah, you're just like quit drinking the sugar water bullshit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's a water Drink thing some... over there, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go get go get the water. Yeah, because I always remember, especially at the gorge, dude. Yeah, you had to like we always I'd always bring my own water bottle, dude, because like. I barely, because most of those years, dude, I would go in, like, as a teenager, dude, or, like, you know, in my early 20s, like, you, like, have, like, what, maybe, like, 50 to 100 bucks, if that, you know, like, you're going in there, no money whatsoever, dude, so. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, if you're lucky, like, enough to actually eat some food over the course of a couple days, and that's about it. Some years, I was, like, $20, dude, like, I'd go there with $20 or something. (laughs) No, for sure. Yeah, I remember the first year I like the second year I went because the first year I went was like oh one and then oh two fucking uh, Eric Eric Smith said straight up paid for my ticket I remember that oh, began nice. twenty years of friendship. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take you to the Warp Tour, buddy. Don't even worry about it. Hell yeah, that yeah, Warp Tour. No, go ahead. I was gonna say Warp Tour used to be fun. Yeah, that was a good time there and stuff. I wanted to go to the last one, dude, but they didn't even come through Washington State, dude. They uh, they went. And I forget the exact year, but they came through the year prior. But then the year that they announced that it was the last one, um, yeah, they don't, they're not fucking doing it. They, I guess they're doing like, they did like a, like a single show or whatever, and like somewhere in California last year, not last year, I guess it would have been the year before. It's some like oh, okay. one off, like two night show or some shit. But, you know, I guess that's probably what they'll do in the future if they ever go back to it. 
Yeah, I always felt like the Cali shows were way bigger for him anyways. Like when they came to Washington, they were yeah. missing like half the good lineup, you know, type of deal. You're like, well, what about these bands? And they're like, yeah, they didn't want to come to this one. I'm like, what? Like, I know. It's like the year Billy Idol was supposed to, like Billy Idol was supposed to be there one year. And he's like, yeah, I don't want to go to the Gorge. Yeah, I'm just like, really? The Gorge? Yeah. It's funny. Well, it's funny because you get those bands, you'd be like, we love it here at Seattle. It's like, you're so far from Seattle. Shut the fuck yeah. up. You have no idea where you are on the map. Oh, dude, I get that shit down here so much and stuff. Like, <laughs> you know, like going to the coffee shop, they're like, yeah. you, you meet new people here every year, you know, during the harvest season. And uh, there's people like, oh, like, where are, you, where are you from? I'm like, you know, they're like, oh, I'm from France or whatever and shit. Oh, I'm like, cool. where, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, I'm from Thrit. And, um, and I get a ton of people, or just, I guess, people from the United States that are from, like, the East, never been out West. And they're, they're I'm like, I'm from Washington. They're like, oh, yeah. like, are you by Seattle? Like, from Seattle? And yeah. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not at all. Like, I, they're like, oh, it rains a lot, right? I'm like, no, no, it does not. We're like, actually, it everybody over here. <laughs> it's just like, no, it's like, everybody gets this. Seattle like oh it's Seattle I'm like you know there's a whole other part of the like three quarters of the rest of the state that's not Seattle you know yeah dude Seattle's Seattle's like just a very tiny portion of the state of Washington dude like we go from rainforest to fucking desert dude like all within the span of like an hour oh that's why I always got to remind them I'm like you know Washington has every natural uh uh what do you call it environment like it yeah. has rainforest deserts uh mountains that's mountain volcanoes. yeah mountains volcanoes yeah. like Cascades. it's like whatever yeah all the uh yeah. all the regions are whatever you call those i'm blanking on the name right now and stuff but they're all in washington and stuff mm. and people are like everybody just don't, i'm like you don't remember that like yeah. that should be like oh washington don't you have everything there like you have the world and a state type of thing and it's like they're like oh you got seattle kind of right yeah i'm just like i'm like no we have more than seattle fuck it's like but then you, I, have you been to the space needle lately it's like like it's like dude do you know that's not the tallest thing in the seattle anymore like yeah, yeah. you can't even see the space needle like dude, the space needle is <laughs> tiny compared to a lot of those skyscrapers there dude it's, yeah it's not that big but then i also find too when i meet people that are from washington immediately we both kind of have like a little standoff stare and we're like where are you from <laughs> <laughs> and that and if it's like we're like uh i'm from you know tri cities i'm like oh shit i'm from yakima man i'm right okay. down the street and they're like nice, we're like nice. right on bro like cool and that but then i'll meet somebody and they're like oh you know i'm from from auburn or i'm from you know kirkland or whatever and that and i'm like or they're like i'm from seattle and i'm like yeah What's up? Like, where are you from? I'm like, yeah, come on. We're both like, uh. uh they're like, uh, isn't there a lot of drugs there? It's like, well, there's yeah, a lot just, of drugs where you are too, buddy. Just Don't like, be all judgy. <laughs> okay. Like, I know I've definitely met one person when I was at the coffee shop. It was like, I think she said Seattle and I was said Yakima. We both just yeah. turned and walked away from each other. Oh, are you like, serious? Wow, she wouldn't even we're like, just like, acknowledge your presence. Like, <laughs> it's like, cool. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Anyways, I'm gonna go over here because uh, I didn't uh, care to meet you. And anyway. it's like, if you're like, I noticed that state split in half. You know, if, mm. if you're from the east side, you, you maybe you could, yeah, you, you know, like, well, I mean, east siders get along with east siders, yeah, west siders exactly. get along with west siders. But if you like mix the two, unless you're real close to the mountains yeah. or something like that, it's it's like, different uh, people. Like, it's definitely there's two different sides to the state for sure. There's different people on both sides. And uh, it's yeah, we got that gang. The, the the gang the gang issues here. I feel like give us a really bad name, dude. It's the meth and the oh, gang yeah. issues. People oh, are yeah. like, oh shit! It's like they're like, oh should I go to Yakima? I'm gonna get shot. It's like no, only if you're on Cherry. Okay, let's get this That's straight. Yeah. <laughs> North Sixteenth, stay the fuck away from that. Don't go down, you know, too far down Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard or yeah, something right? like that. Like, I, yeah, cool. I don't know, dude. Like, the sketchy when I when I used to deliver pizza, dude. I used to the, deliver in the ghetto here in Yakima, like a lot and like dude honestly those kind of those like those those areas down there like off of like um not necessarily fair but like kind of in that area you know like target those it's not oh, too bad it wasn't really ever too bad there i never had any issues there dude but my issues always came from like cherry avenue dude like the only times like 
people got jumped like the the drivers would get you know harassed is like around that specific area yeah um, yeah for sure no I cherry that, was a, oh, cherry was, was always ne- notorious for sure well, as a teenager, dude, I remember that shit being fucking scary, dude. Like, it was scary to go to fucking, you know, overall fucking cherry and shit. Dude, that's, uh, and first and, was it first? Yeah. Uh, well, I went to it. So, like North second. Street? No, no, I was going to say in first grade, but that was, I was going to a different school and stuff. Mm. But, uh, second, first, second, and third grade, I rode the city bus nice to, from from north first street almost right where you hit oh, the freeway wow. there yeah and all the way up to mckinley which meant that i had wow. i had which meant that i had to ride a city bus to the bus uh the depot the depot yeah where they switch buses mm-hmm. i'd hang out there for a little bit by myself and then jump on another bus that just like cruised <laughs> yeah that just cruised the ghetto before yeah. it made its way up to mckinley and stuff like that so every day for like first second third grade i was just like more or less like driving through or hanging out in the ghetto or at the bus depot and shit like that and and as a kid i remember it being like not that i was crazy intimidated and stuff but like i don't know i'm a little gullible i'm a little like I kind of put on a persona where I'm just like, when I'm in a scary place, I'm like, wow, what's to worry about and stuff. But like deep down, I was like, I was like, man, this is fucked up. Like I probably should not be a little kid hanging out here. This is like not the go zone. Like, well, you also got to put it into perspective too, dude. We're talking like the early nineties and Yakima, dude. This is like when, ga- when the, the gang reputation like first hit hard for Yakima, dude, like people were getting shot left and right, dude. I remember yeah. when I first moved to Yakima, dude, my mom kind of did the same shit, dude. She was like, oh, it's okay. Just go walk around. You're five years old. Go walk down to the fucking school. And a cop, like, straight up, like, picked us up. And I remember, like, talking to my mom. And my mom was, like, talking to the cop. And, they, and he was telling her about, like, the gang activity in the area where we lived. And, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, mom. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. No, for, for sure. It's like uh, I lived with my folks in the trailer park on North First Street. Mm-hmm. right by the double tree or whatever i know exactly across. i used to deliver a lot of pizza there dude and that place infuriated me dude you yeah. never knew what the number was of the trailer dude you had no fucking clue it's never there yeah no for sure so it was like i grew up i grew up there when i was real young and they would ride the uh city bus or the trolley when it was actually still running trolley. yeah it's still rolls. Tr- no but i mean it was free as a mm-hmm. public transit when i was like right it was like i think i think first grade or something like that first or second grade it was free Mm -hmm. and then uh the city bus was was 20 cents or something like that and then the trolley started charging 10 cents and the city bus started charging a quarter and so on until the trolley went away and stuff but i used to just ride that i would leave like my parents would be working and stuff and not Mm -hmm. home till like later Mm -hmm. i'd just be home alone at the so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go downtown. I'm gonna go to Ron's Coin and Book, and I'd oh, go yeah. jump on. I go jump on the trolley because it was free, or I pitch up to like twenty cents. It was to jump on the city bus, and I'd ride downtown. And I walked to Ron's Coin and Book, where they sold Ninja Stars and Switchblades. Nice, nice. And that that was before they you know outlawed Switchblades and stuff, and they would just sell them to anybody. Like they didn't care about age. They didn't care about anything at the time. And then I I specifically remember that I went there one day and they finally made it over 18 and they outlawed switchblades. And I was like, Oh, you motherfuckers. Cause I had bought like a ton of Ninja stars, yeah. like you're buying knives and shit like that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm in like first grade going to a collectible store. Like, Oh, cool. Like, what do you got in here? And they're like, Oh, switchblades, Ninja stars. I'm like, can I, how much are the switchblades? They're like, Oh, these are eight bucks. You know, like how much are the Ninja stars? Uh, we got them for five. I'm like, cool. Can I get a Ninja star? You know, like I always like was packing a ninja star, you know, like some of our friends we had like had switch blades and shit like that. It was just like or butterfly knives. That was always cool. It was like little kids buying butterfly knives from Ron's coin and collectible. <laughs> the nineties were a different time, dude. The nineties were a different time, hundred percent, man. Uh, did you did your parents know about your collection of uh of knives and shit or like did you have to hide it from them? Uh they knew about the ninja stars and well, at least one of them. I don't think they knew about everything. You know, it was just like, 
maybe I showed them the one ninja star that wasn't too bad and got how they feel about it. And they were like, I don't know if I like it, but don't get any more of this shit. And I was like, all right, <laughs> uh, cool. I, w- I won't, I won't do that again. You're like, I got away with it one time. I'm going to get away with it again. Just like, all right, check that in the book of uh, don't let mom and dad know. <laughs> You're going to file that one in the roll, the Rolodex there, dude. I'm not going to yeah. tell you about that one, mom. Yeah. All right. Stuff. Uh, when mom asked what you did today, it's not buying switchblades and yeah. ninja stars. It's like you get in trouble at school. They're like, we found a switchblade on him. It's like, well, mom, you told me not to tell you. It's like, I told you it's not like- to have those. No. <laughs> I thought you said I could, but I just didn't want you don't want to hear about it. You're like, I'm sorry, mom. I come to school in the ghetto. Yeah. Like, I have to defend myself. I'm living on the streets yeah. of Yakima, 93, dude. That was, yeah, that was, uh, I went to Barge Lincoln at the time before I came to McKinley, which right. is like right in that little hub down there. It's like, I, I know don't know exactly how to, where it's at, dude. I, I know exactly. But like the Red Lobster, isn't it? Yeah, back behind the Red Lobster yeah. and like the, those ghetto neighborhoods and stuff. It's I work like, down there, dude. That's where when I am working actually on location, dude. That's where I like where our uh, warehouse is down there. Oh, that's cool. I know, I know so, that whole area, dude. <laughs> so I, I don't know if the house is still there, but um, if you when you turn at Red Lobster and you know that street goes right to Barge Lincoln. Yep. Right when you hit the corner of where Barge Lincoln starts, that first corner, kitty corner to that on the Red Lobster side, yeah. there's a ho- there's a house right there on the corner, and that was Deshaun Hourland's house when we first oh, met. Oh wow! Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I know that. I know exactly kind of that area. I don't remember the house off top, but no, dude. That's yeah, cool, yeah. Man. Next next time you drive by there, check it out and see if that house is still there or whatever. Because that's yeah, yeah that's where <laughs> I met. That's where I met Deshaun. Was in. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess kindergarten or first first grade or something like that and she lived right there in that house across the street and we mm-hmm. used to hang out a bunch and stuff i think that's where she gets her little her ghetto queen from there <laughs> dude yeah she totally she totally embraced that ghetto queen attitude back in the day yeah oh she's hood she don't fuck around you know that's <laughs> i wouldn't fuck around with her dude i definitely would not fuck around with deshaun dude 100 percent I haven't seen I haven't seen her fucking forever, dude. Like, I remember Jessica had seen her because like uh like Jessica went out. This was like years ago, dude. It's like probably like twenty like five when we were like in our twenties, dude. Like I don't know, dude. Like Jessica had seen her. But I'm friends with her on Facebook though, so I know I know she's got a little kid now, like right and like she's married. Yeah, she yeah she's got a kid. I don't know if she yeah I don't, I don't know if yeah I don't think she's married, but they've been together for quite a while and uh, yeah. now she's like a um she works at the hospital. And oh, stuff. She, up, yeah, she's got yeah. a pretty good job at the hospital, and she was at um, whatever they called regional before they shut it down. Oh, and then yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. And the, name. Yeah, and then she moved over to uh, Memorial and stuff. So yeah. that's why I'm just like, man, that that girl is hardcore. She she went from just like the streets to now she's I'm sure she's like helping out people from the streets or something like that. It's right working at the hospital. I, I feel like I'd want her to be my nurse, but I wouldn't want to give her any guff, you know? Yeah, you just sit there and she take did, it. Like, I don't know how I feel about needles. She'd be like, pussy, you're getting a shot. <laughs> like, just sit the fuck down. <laughs> I fucking hate shots, dude. I, I had to get, whenever you get, like, blood drawn or whatever, dude, it's like, you just kind of look away. You're just like, okay, fuck it, just do it. And like, you know, yeah, yeah. Look away, dude. I fucking hate that shit. I hate going to it. It's so, like. I had such like I don't know like anxiety over going to the doctor, dude. I fucking hate that shit. Oh, for sure. That's uh, I try and avoid hurting myself too mm. much to the point that I have to go to a hospital, you know, type yeah. of deal. Yeah. And, but it's it's gotten because I'm the same way. I'm like I really don't like going to the hospitals. I don't like shots. I don't yeah. like that whole situation. <laughs> I can kind of withstand being there, but not if I have to yeah. be there. Right. And. Uh, but now I've gotten this intuition where it's like, you know, if I hurt myself enough that I know I have to go to the hospital, I'm like, oh, God damn it. Fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Fuck. Like, what's wrong? I'm like, I got to go to the fucking hospital. Like, <laughs> I, know, I know what you mean, dude. I know the feeling, dude. Like, I uh, there was uh, this one time I was like, this is like, I don't know, it's probably like five years ago at this point. But I was, um, I was at my mom's house and I was leaving. I was getting into my car. And I fucking sat down, dude. And like, you know, I was wearing, you know, boxers or whatever. So like I caught the end of my fucking testicle, dude. And I fucking Uh-oh. sat on it, dude. 
and oh, instant, shit. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, like that's like instant pain. And I'm like, fuck. And so like, like, I think like two, three days go by and it just, it felt really bad. Like it was still hurting really, really bad. So I was like, okay, fucking damn it. I gotta go to the fucking hospital. You know? So like I had to go in there. I'm like, I go in there. I'm like, Hey, uh, you know, I sat on my testicle the other day. She's like, come right here. <laughs> Walk <laughs> back. You know, oh, like, we got the room for that. Yeah, yeah. They had to fucking do an ultrasound to make sure there was no blood and like take a piss test and shit. Dude. It was like, I was good to go, but it was like, yeah, one of those times where it's like, damn it. Fuck. Yeah, I feel, uh, well, I guess not the, yeah, it was the last time I went to the hospital, I mm. broke my, I broke my knuckle, and, um, I actually didn't go to the hospital, I, yeah. I broke it, oh, it was, it was last, not this, uh, New Year's, just a few days ago, but the last New Year's, last year? uh, yeah, and, uh, we were playing a show out of town, having a New Year's Eve show, and we got, we played our second set and I had been drinking throughout the night, but then, <laughs> yeah. then we played, our, we played, we had one more set to do. And in the break in between the, before the last set, we all took whiskey shots, like whiskey pickleback shots. Yep. And, uh, we lined them up, but then I, th- I feel like Lauren was outside or something and he wasn't there. And I was like, here, somebody want this shot and nobody would take it. And so I was like, fuck it. And I took the shot. So nice. I took like nice. like a couple couple shots, and I was already like some drafts deep and stuff. And you're having a good time. You're having a good time. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the last set came around and stuff. We're playing, and it's getting towards the end. And I was like, we ended up going off on this tangent where we like maybe we kind of fucked the song up because we're all getting a little drunk. A little drunk. But we're. <laughs> But it wasn't like we fucked it up. We were playing. We just fucked up the actual, like, how it's supposed to go. And so I was trying to cue the band, like, like we or end it, you know? And they just kept playing. And I was like, no, end it. <laughs> <laughs> and they just, they, they just kept playing and kept And I was like, you know, like, and they, they were misinterpreting my cue to end as, like, keep it. I was like, no, like, wrap it up. And they thought. They thought it meant keep it going. Good job. <laughs> yeah, it. and I was like, fuck. So finally, I was just like, no, fuck it. I'll end this song. Like, and so I like tossed my guitar down, like knocked the mic over, and I looked back at the drums, and I was like, I was like, I'm fucking taking these drums out. And like, the drummer got up and was like, fuck you and stuff. And he's <laughs> like, you're gonna fight him. Like, I'm gonna end this song one way or the yeah. other, man. Yeah. So we had, we almost ended up getting in this fucking like fight and shit and and like the bass player like pulled me aside. He was like, "Not here, bro," and like this and that. And this I went is outside. The place, man. <laughs> I was like, "If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen." And like, <laughs> and oh, uh, man. so anyway, so he was like, I ended up walking outside. I was really pissed, and I punched the fucking bus. Oh no! And I really underestimated how hard the bus is i was like i gave and how drunk i was apparently right, and stuff right. and i i punched it like and i didn't give it a solid straight punch i kind of roundhouse the bus you know ended up just breaking my pinky knuckle and, yeah and uh i knew it by it didn't take i was just like ah fuck like that hurts like a lot and it's swelling up and all this type of shit oh, well we're no. like we're staying out of town like we're we're sleeping in like a bus in a motel room and shit like that and and so i just like was like whatever i was too drunk to really like give a shit anyways and the next morning i was like woke up and my hand hurt like fucking no other and i was like all right so i went to the grocery store and i bought some popsicle sticks and i got an ace bandage and i just like and like just put it where it needed to be. Right. I was just like, all right, well, this is uh, it's gonna happen. And like, put it back in its spot, it's, I guess. Its proper and, place. Yeah, and uh, and then just wrapped it up and stuff, splinted it and wrapped it up, and and um, you know, a couple of weeks go by, and I'm like hanging out, and I'm still like, my hands just like, it's still hurting. I'm a little nervous. About it. I'm like, man, I really hope I didn't shatter my knuckle. Yeah, like, exactly. and I'm. And I make a couple comments to uh, a girl I'm dating, and she was like, "You know, you should go to the fucking hospital." And I was just like, "Like what? Like uh, I don't, I don't know about that shit." It takes like, a woman to do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And she was like, "No, fuck you. We're going to the hospital." And like, 
you're like get in the fucking car we're going and i was just like god damn it like <laughs> you, punch, right. you punch the door in the other hand you're like fuck <laughs> and so uh she loaded me up we drove down there and yeah they take x-rays of it everything else and they look at it and they're like they're like so when did you break this i was like uh two weeks ago they're like well why'd you come now mm. and i was like i was like uh my girlfriend they're like ah oh, okay gotcha and that next person like x-ray it was like yeah. i swear it was like three or four of them like well why are you here now and i was like oh my girlfriend and they were like ah no need to explain we get that it makes sense <laughs> yeah and the last, the last guy told me, he was like, well, there's nothing we can do for you at all. Cause it's already started healing. And yeah. you're like, you're like five, 5% from perfect. That's good. Which you'll have, like, you'll have full mobility. You're this, you're that, like, yeah, there was up too bad. No, huh? they're just kind of like, well, whatever you did, it put it back to where like, you did as good as we were going to do. So, <laughs> I, like, so you said, tell me like, I got a future in the, in the hospital business here, doctor. Yeah. I was just All like, all right. John Hill. But yeah, I hated that shit. Cause it was like, uh, and that wasn't too bad. Cause it was like more or less, I just had to wait around. But what, yeah. what made me nervous was, Oh no, this was a different story. Before that, it was a couple of years ago. I was trying to make a t-shirt cannon for the band for a show we had. And I, I might've, I might have told this story, but I decided not to do an air compressed one. I wanted to make a CO2, like a paintball gun with a really big tube on it. Right. So I constructed my own tubing and all this other shit. And uh, I was testing it out and I made a, a PVC one and I made a one made out of metal. Okay. <laughs> okay. And when I was testing out the PVC one, I was... I overpressurized the the tank because I didn't have like a regulator or a gauge on it. I just had like a canister of CO2 that goes to a paintball oh, gun. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Tubed into a tank with yeah. a valve. And so I just turned it on. I was like, Psh! and I tried it a couple times and I was like, it was shooting it, but it wasn't like really shooting. The, the valve kept getting stuck and it mm -hmm. was just like not like popping it off very hard. I was like, fuck, man. Like, all right. And I was like, you know, I'm going to give this one more shot and stuff and see if I can just like hit the release on it fast and see how long far this thing will go. And I, I didn't take into account that I, over the course of trying to make this work a couple of times, I'd frozen all the components from the CO2. Fuck. And then when I, I was like, I'm giving it one more second of CO2. Cause I was just counting it in my head, like turn on the valve one, 1000 two 1000, shut it off. I was like, you know, I'm going to give it like four seconds on this. And so I went one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, and I saw the thing having a failure. And I was like, oh, and I shut off the valve real quick, but the, the canister, like, as I was shutting the valve off, exploded the PVC pipe. Like, it blew up like a bomb and stuff. I, like, overpressurized the CO2. It shattered into pieces, and um, a bunch of shrapnel flew. I, I hit two pieces right in my face. Almost took my eye out, but like Holy not quite. Holy fuck, dude. <laughs> it blew a piece through a camping chair back. There's like a hole in a camping chair oh, where wow. a piece of shrapnel went through it and this uh, carport roof, it popped like a couple holes through that. Well, when it blew up though, I put my hand out like that and it, That's good. it split, split this right here, just filleted it like a Oh, fuck. Steak. Well, it's probably better than your ha your eye, though, dude. I mean, I'd rather yeah. get all fucked up than my fucking eye. <laughs> yeah, so that was yeah. like, I think that's the only thing that saved my eye from the shrapnel. Right. Because it was like, it was like I had cuts right yeah. around it and that, but my hand was split right I here. Bet. Yeah. And uh, so I know it was like a saving private Ryan moment. Like everything went, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was looking around and I was like, oh, shit. And I looked, I looked at my hand, but I looked at my, my ring finger because it was throbbing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I think I got a blood blister. Like, I remember firecrackers exploding in my hand and stuff. I was like, ah, oh, man, right. this hurts, you know. Right. And I looked, and I could see there was going to be a blood blister. And then I was like, but right here. And I went like that and opened my hand up, and it was just like a filleted steak right there. And I was like, <laughs> oh, fuck. And I turned, and my dad happened to be there at the time. And, he was playing guitar and was like in a clear line of sight and stuff. And he was kind of like, da -da 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 -da. and he goes, I knew it was bad when I heard the shrapnel start raining back down on the carport roof. 
and I, oh, and I wow. looked at I, I looked at my dad and I was like, "Yo, dad," and he was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "I fucked up," and he was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Yeah, I fucked up," and he was like, "Oh shit, all right," like comes out <laughs> and stuff, like sits me down and shit, and he's like, uh, "What do you?" And but the whole time through my head is I was like, my in my head I was like, I fucked up. I didn't think I was in that much trouble, but I was like, I gotta go to the hospital. I can't fix this. Right. This is like that's not like put a band aid on it damage. Yeah, that's you gotta not get like, some fucking oh. sewing going on there, dude. Oh yeah, I was like, fuck. Up. And instantly, I was just like, damn it, fuck. Like, this is a definite hospital trip. This means shots. This means fucking right. Sewing Blood needles. Like, taken, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, god damn it. And then the part about that all that scared me the most though is actually by the time I got to the hospital, my hand didn't hurt at all, and I, j- I joked with my dad was like. I was like, yeah, dad, I'm good. We could just drive back and stuff. I'll keep in mind, this is like a, like a two hour drive to the hospital. Oh, geez. <laughs> and that, so my, da- my dad's like driving me there. We get there, we go in, check into the, the, ER. Uh, yeah, the ER, mm-hmm. sitting in the lobby and a nurse comes up to me and she starts checking my blood pressure, but then she grabs my wrist and she starts squeezing my wrist in that. Ooh. and and kind of doing the like checking your pulse you know yeah, yeah and yeah. i was i was like what are you doing she goes oh i'm checking you for an embolism right now and i was like Ex- excuse me she goes well because you had a concussive wound there's a possibility that you may have blown an air bubble into your your bloodstream oh fuck yeah oh no, so I, fuck I, i'm sitting there in my chair while she's checking to see if like the old classic like needle full of air you know and i was like well how long does it take for that to like happen and stuff she was like oh you know uh, and i was like well how, how do you know she goes well if you have a pulse on both sides of your wrist that means you're good but she goes if you only have a pulse on one side of your wrist and not the other that's Ugh. bad and yeah. i was like i was like uh so how am i doing am i am i dead am i like what's and she was like no you're fine it's, it feels like you're fine now but we're gonna send you in to like double verify and that right. i'm thinking i just drove two hours and I've been sitting in the ER for a second, waiting to get into a room. How long do you actually have before the air bubble makes it to your heart and you yeah. just keel over? You know, and that it's like, apparently I did it. But yeah, I was like sitting there, like, all right, don't panic, don't You'll be panic. Right. You'll be all right. I got I got needles coming up here soon. As long as I don't die from an air bubble, I'll yeah. be fine. I remember uh, in middle school, dude, um, in the sixth grade. I remember fucking them telling us that same shit, dude, because you had to use the air compressor to get the sawdust oh, off yeah. you. They're like, don't put it up to your skin because you can get an air bubble and then it go in and kill you, dude. I'm like, that always freaked me out. And I was like, I'll never do with that. I yeah. looked at the guy next to me. I'm just like, I'm never doing that shit. <laughs> no, that's always been one of my yeah. like biggest fears is just like the air bubble in the bloodstream. And I'm like, and then I was sitting there and she was like, oh, we're checking you for that. And I was like, uh, oh, dude, that's so I'm, scary. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, Sean Hill, that's uh, that's why we have to end it this time, dude. Which I gotta say, dude, I don't, I don't think most guests can fucking top that story, dude. I mean, like, that's air bubble to the heart, dude. Come on. That's yeah. Well, fucking, if you, yeah, if you topped it, you'd probably be dead, I suppose. So. And then they wouldn't be on the podcast. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right on, Sean Hill, dude. Well, hey, man, what do you? Uh, anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Um, I guess yeah. Before we get out of here, uh. Go and check out Merit Parcel, uh, main band that I do and stuff. We just put out a couple new music videos and a couple new singles. Um, we've been sending them out to radio stations, and hopefully you'll hear them in your town and stuff. But uh, yeah, I got yeah, got two new singles out with uh, accompanying music videos. It's a song called um, "You Gave Me So Much" and "Stepping Stones," um, and then. I'm working with uh, another band called Matthew Wallace and the Stolen Horses. Oh, that's what's and, up. Okay. Yeah. And we're, uh, we just went to the studio to put out some music and he's been putting out some singles as well. Nice. And stuff. So I say, check that out. And then, uh, you know, Black Sheep and Bad Apples, uh, the podcast that, that I'm on as well and stuff. Well, fucking A, dude. Sean Hill, I thank you so much for coming on the podcast here, sir. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Kevin. It's good to be on again and good to, good to talk to you. Good to see you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Well, right on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kevin Porter for Sean Hill. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.
This podcast has been brought to you by Pizza Productions. <laughs> <laughs>